First, Dan, can you give us some background on the on the demand side of this issue that may be driving some of, some of the uh, disasters like we're seeing in Bangladesh? Well, it's a, a complicated question uh, with a complicated answer. Uh, the textile industry is a very complicated global industry. It's arguably the world's first mass-produced product with roots really back to the Industrial Revolution. And even with all of the technological changes and advances over the last 300, 350 years, you still see a really large component of the overall cost of production being labor. So really the, the largest single driver of this process, uh, and, and that leads to these disasters such as we saw in Bang Bangladesh, is the global sourcing and the movement of companies uh, to low cost producers. So Bangladesh currently, their minimum wage is $37 a month. This is one of the lowest, if not the lowest minimum wage uh, globally for a country that's developed enough to actually have a minimum wage. And it's been referred to as the China price, meaning that it is the lowest cost and that makes Bangladesh um, very dependent on and very appealing for companies that are doing a lot of textile production. So if I was gonna give a single answer to the question, I would say labor costs in this process where textile companies move to the lowest cost producing country. But there are really lots of other factors involved. Increased price sensitivity for consumers um, during the economic downturn and then coming out of that downturn globally, uh, global regulatory practices and how those influence this process. And then this fast fashion concept that you brought up in the introduction is also a driver of this. This increased focus on efficiency. Initially, efficiency was something done in developing countries to give them a competitive advantage as companies started to leave southeastern the United States, uh, the United Kingdom, similar places, the idea was, well, we can be more efficient. Developing countries and least developed countries, Bangladesh is uh, typically classified as a least developed country by the United Nations, have taken on this same sort of high efficiency approach. And what this means then in the case of fast fashion, what you're trying to do is get these Paris runway, New York runway fashions out to middle, upper middle class consumers as quickly as possible. So you have this real high turnover and this real focus on efficiency and getting things out as quickly as possible. In the case of the Bangladesh disaster, they actually were working overtime, working um, extra hours because they were behind on meeting an order because of this focus on efficiency and getting the product out as quickly as possible. Uh, one last driver is just the global market for these goods. You have an emerging global middle class. So you see exporting not just to the typical Western developing countries, but to China, to middle class consumers in India, to Brazil, to uh, other emerging markets that have this middle class. So that just increases the churn, increases the demand, and increases the sensitivity. Good. Excellent observations. Dennis, do you have anything to add to this? Well, a little different perspective perhaps. Uh, Dan's right in that the industry has uh, dramatically grown over the last number of years. But also, there is a little bit of a misnomer over what might be classified as fast fashion. Because the reality is apparel generally will turn sometime between four and six times a year. So the expectation is that you're going to sell through that inventory within 10 to 13 weeks. And that is true whether you're dealing in a lower price range or in a higher price range. So to say that the disasters are caused as a result of, you know, turn or the price point of the uh, product is really uh, not quite, uh, I would not necessarily agree with because there is no reason where that would drive poor safety standards or human rights violations. And most retailers would not uh, and do not have uh, any tolerance for violations on either safety or uh, human rights violations. So the issues are not necessarily being driven by you know the product being at a low price point or even a high price point they're really more driven by whether or not the competing country or competing factory uh, is up to the same standards as what may exist in other countries and as you have global sourcing and there is certainly as dan has pointed out growth of sourcing throughout a lot of different countries Bangladesh is a very small percentage of the total uh, production of apparel today. It's only about $20 billion, which is a relatively small amount of apparel manufacturing uh, within the industry. 
And because it is small and it is developing and it, it is uh, a, uh, somewhat backward in many of the aspects of what exists and standards of the other countries, you have violations like this that will take place and unfortunately result in d disasters like the one that just took place. Good. Thanks, guys. Those are some two very interesting perspectives. Thank you. Mm -hmm.